Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center, and today we're talking about the Genome Air Thread 2000D Serger. In this video, I'm going to show you the basic operations of this machine. Now, to start with, when you turn it on, immediately raise that thread tree. That's very important for the thread to flow correctly through the machine. And then I usually like to kind of straighten out the thread just to make sure everything's uh, and then nothing's tangled. So, for most of your serging, you're going to be sewing four thread serging that uh, kind of looks like this here. We've got four threads, it's cutting off an edge and giving it, you a narrow, like quarter inch seam. Nice way to finish your seams. So I'm gonna show you how to set that your machine up for that. And most of the time, that's how you will have it set up. But if this is a new machine, let's figure this out together. So to start with, you wanna have your tension dials all right around three, between two and four. And then your stitch length, which is this outer dial here, kinda of clicks into position at three. That's your normal stitch length. And this is your differential feed right here. Now the differential feed is great for sewing knits. For instance, this knit here, you can see one of these seams was sewn with just regular differential feed and it was a little bit wavy. Knits, especially without good stretch recovery, some knits can tend to get stretched out and stay stretched out. So bumping this up a little bit more, I get a nice straight seam, which still has a little bit of stretch. Now let me explain why you have some stretch in your stitch. That's because the needle threads go through the fabric, come over to the other side, grab your lower looper thread and come back up. So that gives that little bit of stretch in those um, the needle uh, threads. Okay, so for sewing regular cotton woven fabric, can be polyester or whatever, but you want to just have that right there at one. Another thing you want to make sure is you have this at standard, not tight. What tight does, it'll give you that nice rolled hem edge that just tightens this, um, the lower looper. And then, okay, I'm going to open this up so I can show you more of what's going on here. This is actually a really nice chart to tell you which part of the machine sews with which thread in the stitch. Over here, this is your, sti your uh, stitch width or actually uh, cutter position. So when I move that, if you look really carefully here, you can see how that moves back and forth. I usually like to have it right about there. You get about two millimeters worth of difference in width, which can make a lot of difference if you're sewing something very lofty and thick or very fine and uh, narrow. You want to have your stitches so that they just barely hang off the edge like this. Not so tight that they scrunch the fabric, but not so loopy that you got big loops. That's gonna help with that. And then down here, this is the uh, knob to engage or disengage your upper knife. Now the upper knife is really good for making sure you get your stitch, your um, fabric cut off nice and neatly, but sometimes you wanna disengage that and I kind of went into that in our uh, overview uh, as how to get, disengage that. And then this little guy here, if you look really carefully there, I'm gonna move it back and forth. That moves the stitch finger for doing serging or for doing rolled hem. That's what the S and the R mean. So for regular serging, that's what you want. Another thing that sometimes people wonder about, this is your presser foot pressure. Keep it right there on end for most fabrics. And then, of course, this is your scrap catcher. Really nice and handy to have that. So we're gonna start out doing a little serging here just to kind of show you what it does. Okay, notice you can lift this up. You don't have to lift up your presser foot, you can. And what that'll do is um, release the tension on all your threads. But if you're simply just getting ready to sew, just lift up the foot. I like to do that when I have two or more layers that I'm surging together because the feed dogs pull that bottom layer, but your presser foot could actually push forward. If you simply put it up like this, it could push forward that top layer. So let's grab a hold of it like that. And then 
um, I do this with all my sewing, all my machines. For the first couple of stitches, I like to hang on to that thread tail, especially if you've just threaded your machine. Giving a little bit of pressure on that tail, just finger pressure like that helps. There we go. And the scrap falls right in the scrap catcher. There we go. That's what a nice serge seam should look like. You can see the uh, loopers meet right there on the edge. Your needle threads, and I'm using different colors of thread to show you uh, just for educational purposes. But um, of course you would use probably the same color of thread to match your fabric. And if you look carefully, you can see a little bit of the blue coming through. Kind of hard to see the yellow, but it is coming through. And um, as I explained with the knits, that's what you want. Now, when you're surging, sergers do not have a back stitch button. So to seal the ends of your seam, you want to be able to seal those. I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, roll this forward like this. And also your hand wheel, there's a a arrow right here showing which way you should roll it. So never crank it backwards because you can end up with a thread tangle. So crank it forward. Okay, now to seal the beginning of the seam, I power it forward until my needles are just about to get into the fabric and then I hand walk it two full stitches and then leave the needles down, lift up the presser foot and smooth out that tail. What I'm doing is I'm smoothing out the looper threads along the needle threads. Bring it around to the left of the cutter, make sure it's to the left of the cutter, not to the right. And now, kind of hold it down a little bit and then power it. It cuts off, off that thread tail. And that thread tail is now sewn into the seam. Got a little extra loops there. That probably means I should have searched a little bit further in. This is a great way to finish the beginning of your seam. Now what about the end here? So cut your thread tail so it's about three inches long. Make sure it's smoothed out nice and evenly. Take a large eyed needle like a darning needle, something like that. Poke the eye end through the stitches like that. Take your thread tail. I like to fold it in half. It's a little bit easier to do it that way. Poke it through the eye of the needle. So the whole, whole thread tail is through the eye of the needle. Give it a little bit of slack and then pull that through the stitches. Then you can cut off the excess and now you have finished both ends of your seam. Now, if you had intended to do this at the beginning but you found yourself stitch it, stitching already two inches in, you can still finish the beginning the same way that you finished the end. Now what about taking out your stitches? Okay, my favorite way of taking out the stitches is by removing the needle threads. So I'll take like a darning needle or something and I'll just take out these needle threads. Make sure you're only grabbing the needle threads because if you grab the looper threads, things are gonna just lock right up. And that, gotta get a hold of that down here. And I like to do just one needle thread at a time. It really, I mean, you can try both of them at once, but I think it works a little bit better. Just one needle thread at a time. And then the looper threads come right off. And that's how you unpick your stitches, nice and neat. Okay, so that's basic serging on four thread. Um, now I'm gonna show you about rolled hem. So doing a rolled hem looks like this. This was done on the Janome Air Thread. It makes a nice finished edge. Rolled hem means it rolls the fabric one time so that there's no raw edge on the edge. The, the raw edge is actually sealed inside those stitches right there. So. To start with, go to your book. It's going to be really helpful for this. Um, page 42, there's a chart right here. Now it has three different kinds of rolled or narrow hems that you can do. Rolled hemming, which is that first one that I showed you, is this one here. For pico edge, it's basically the same thing as rolled hem, only a longer stitch length. Now for narrow hemming, that is where both the 
upper and lower looper have the same tension on them, but it's wonderful for making seams on organza, something that's sheer like this where you don't want the seam to show very much. That will roll that edge of the fabric so it gives some strength to the seam but makes it uh, very elegant looking. That would be what I would use Nero hemming for. But rolled hem, let's start with that. Okay, so we're going to just go top to bottom here. Start with moving this switch over to tight. Then the standard settings for the tension dials are all right about three. Let's just leave that at three for now. And then the stitch length dial, that's this one right here. Let's move that to R. R is right next to the dot. R for rolled hem. Differential feed, we're going to leave that right there at uh, 1.0. Now stitch out a sample and then you might need to change your differential feed to make it a little bit looser or tighter. Uh, that's what you could do if you want to, but let's start out with it like that. And then the chain finger or the stitch finger knob that or is the switch right here. Put, push this over to R for rolled hem and keep the upper knife activated. The needle, we only want to use the right hand needle. So in that case, get out your little screwdriver, your tweezers. And when I'm taking a needle out, I like to leave it threaded because that way, if that needle drops down, the thread's gonna hang onto it with the thread going through the eye of the needle. So we're gonna take out that left hand needle like this, grab a hold of it, let that kind of hang down there like that. Now in this time, in this case, I'm going to hang onto it with my tweezers. Tweezers are really helpful, and these come with your machine. Snip that thread there, take the needle out, and I'm going to put it right down there in the accessories box. Now, <clears throat> I take my thread out <clears throat> like that, just to get this thread out of the way. Now, as soon as you take a needle out, make sure you tighten that set screw down. Those set screws are really tiny and for the vibration that happens when you're sewing, the set screw could get vibrated loose and get lost. Just make sure you, unlo you loosen it again when you put your needle back in. Okay, so we basically have it set up. Let's look at the chart one more time. Um, it says to use synthetic thread. Well, this is um, as opposed to cotton. It's a little bit stronger. Okay, and then use lightweight fabric. Your um, <clears throat> quilting cotton fabric is fine for this, but avoid using poplin or denim because that's not gonna be able to roll a nice hem. It's really nice on things like lining or um, silk. It's really nice. So if you're doing like a, a hem on a scarf, this is a wonderful stitch to have. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get started here. Okay, I got, looks like I got my, that yellow thread is still kind of wants to hang around there. Let's get that out of there. Take that out. This is how we should have gotten it all the way out. There we go, all right. You notice that it's going fairly slow, and that's fine. It's also cutting off a little bit of your fabric, and that's going to be important to give a nice, smooth edge. So where you want to watch when you're sewing is right over here to make sure that it's a consistent width between the cutter and the edge of your fabric. I'm going to leave a little extra here. Now in this case, I've already done some um, rolled hem on this edge. If I was going to go and, um, it's, it's not really possible to use that seam sealing technique that I showed you. So you want to use a product called Fray Check. And I have it around here somewhere. Product called Fray Check. And then you would put that on there, it would dry, and then you let that, and then you cut that excess off. That's how you seal the ends of your seam. But for the most part, for regular seams, I just do that, uh, uh, bring the tail around. Okay, so that is your rolled hem. Now you can also do interesting techniques like this, this lettuce edge by stretching your fabric and make sure you have fabric that's like a rib knit and it, uh, 
uh, curls, doesn't curl one way or the other, but you stretch it. This is another technique that you can use. And then if you use a lofty thread like this, you can fill in the stitch, the uh, space between the stitches, and it looks almost like piping on the edge of your fabric. So that's with this loftier thread. And this is also a maxi lock product. All the maxi lock stretch is what this is called. All of these have the same color of thread. So you can match the thread in the other two with the same color and get that nice edge that way. Okay, so I think that's it. That's how you do your basic operations on your Janome Air Thread Serger. If this was helpful, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area down below. We have lots of other videos on our YouTube channel, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.